I am so tired of seeing people have heal anxiety and shy away from healers. If you're a beginner or casual player that is hesitant on playing a healer class, I am going to provide you a practical healing guide from level 1 to end game. This is not a pep talk or encouraging words. This is a step by step how to guide in order to build confidence, begin understanding the job, and I'm also going to go over the biggest mistake I see healers, specifically white mage in this video, do over level 50. Hello everyone, my name is Stefan Ash and today I have another Final Fantasy XIV guide for you. If at any time you get value out of this video, then use that limit break 4 and smash that subscribe button down below. Seriously though, please make sure your limit break is somewhere on your hotbar sprouts and casual players. Okay, let's jump into this video. I know that there's a lot of controversy in what a healer should be doing or not doing, whether that's focusing healing or DPSing. I am under the strict belief that I want to be as helpful and efficient as possible. There is no reason in the world to overheal your party, as you're not being helpful if you can kill enemies quicker. There is also no reason at all to ignore healing, as that is literally your job. I will be operating under this belief for this video. This is my own personal opinion and I take a little bit of what Endgame does and apply it to casuals and sprouts. If you disagree, then comment down below and give the reasons why you think that healers should be doing something different. Here are a few of my beginner tips that I do when I'm playing any healing class at the start of the dungeon. Number 1. Look at your tank's gear item level. This is a huge indicator what the tank playstyle is going to be. If the tank is under geared for the dungeon, i.e. you're in a level 60 dungeon but his gear is level 54 or level 55 or level 59, you can safely assume that he's going to take more damage than someone who is geared for the dungeon. On the opposite end of that, if the tank is wearing level 80 gear and you're in a level 25 dungeon, you can safely assume that he's going to take less damage than someone who has the same item level as the content you're in. This is not an end-all be-all, but a good guideline to start understanding how trash mobs work and boss works when your tank is taking damage. Number 2. Look at your DPS gear. The same goes for DPS. I know you're wondering why, but think about it. If the DPS is under geared for a particular dungeon, they will kill the enemy slower. If the enemies are not dying as quickly, they have more time to damage the tank, which means more healing. All this information you can learn in about 5 seconds taking a look at each person's gear. And you can prepare for the type of healing situations that you might be in. Let's move on to our first chunk of content, level 1 to 29 content. White Mage early on is fairly straightforward like all the other healer classes. We have our main damage skill stone, our dot or damage over time arrow, and a healing ability, cure 1. After level 24, another really important skill, Lucid Dreaming, which is an MP regeneration skill, will be added to this list. Pretty much all content between 1 and 29 is going to look something like this. Your tank starts pulling aggro. You're using your damage over time. I dot every single enemy as we're running, as this does tons of damage over time. Once the tank is done pooling, you can switch to stone if you feel comfortable or cure 1 on the tank if the health is starting to drop. You'll want to pop Lucid Dreaming pretty often and keep it on cooldown because Cure 1, Cure 2, and Medica are pretty high level MP skills and you can run out of MP pretty quickly if you're just spamming these healing skills. The goal for this part of the content is to start getting comfortable casting stone or at least keeping up your damage over time on the main enemies the tank is attacking. You'll want to start getting comfortable providing DPS early on and it's just best practice for future for being helpful and efficient. Moving on to content 30 to 49, there is a big game changer here. We have a few new skills to rely on. The practice of putting arrow on every enemy as you're pooling is something I still do to the end game content as the tank is pooling in the dungeon. There is no damage spells that you can cast while you're running other than arrow, so you might as well get comfortable putting arrow on enemies. Let's talk about our favorite new skills. We get regen, cure 3, holy. Ignore cure 3 for now. It's mostly used on endgame content and some niche parts in regular content where you have stack markers or when you know all of your party is going to be stacked, you can use cure 3 for a pretty strong heal, but other than that, not much use for it in this part of the content. Regen and Holy are your new best friends. 
I will be frank about this as I am a practical person. You are wasting damage, healing, and not improving yourself if you just spam Cure 1 to heal party members. There are just far more effective and efficient ways to heal. There is really no point to be using Cure 1 once you get Cure 2. That doesn't mean though, don't have it on your bar, just always prioritize Cure 2. Just to justify this even more with science and maths, most new healers believe Cure 1 is faster so I'm healing more by using Cure 1. It is true that the cast time of Cure 1 is faster, but the recast time of both Cure 1 and Cure 2 are the exact same. This means that you will cast two Cure 1s and two Cure 2s in the exact same amount of time. Just the Cure 1s will reach the target quicker. So if you cast two Cure 1s with 22,000 healing each for a total of 44,000 healing and two Cure 2s at 35,000 each for a total of 70,000 healing, do you see where I'm going here? The amount of health being restored at the same time is far different. Cure 2s are just a better healing spell. But I digress. Dungeon pools for 30 to 49 content will look like this. Arrow as the tank pulls, regen after the tank pulls the first group. Once the tank has stopped pulling, this is where you want to cast Holy. Let's talk about regen. The reason you want to wait until he aggroes the first group before you throw regen is because as a healer, you generate aggro if you overheal. When you apply regen on the tank before he aggroes the adds, the enemies will be aggroed to you instead. As this is not usually a big deal, it does put a little more stress on the tank to have to catch the enemies before they get to you instead of just aggroing and continuing on to the next group. It does very little to regen before he is damaged anyway, so regen after he pulls aggro. Let's talk about holy. Healing is not just restoring health. Healing is also stopping health from getting depleted. Holy has a stun for 4 seconds. That's 4 seconds that your tank is not taking damage. Oh wait, but there's more. If you have a regen, your tank is also healing. Oh wait, there's more. If you cast Holy again, they're stunned for another 2 seconds, being slightly resisted this time. One more Holy? Why yes please, they are stunned for one more second. There is a total of 7 seconds that the adds will not be attacking. This is huge in preventing health dropping and even having to heal in the first place. Holy should be your go-to attack with three or more enemies. Sometimes I even use it on two enemies just once for that four second stun. I hope I hit home on how useful Holy is. So to recap, arrow as tank pulls, regen on the tank. When the tank stops, Holy three or four times to stun enemies and cure two in between. Keep regen on the tank at all times during battle. There is no reason to not have free healing happening on the tank at all times. It can drop between fights and as the tank is pulling, but as soon as you're in a fight or you started a boss battle, reapply and keep it applied. Let's move on to the biggest mistake that I see people do after level 50. Level 50 content. This is the main source of content that you'll be playing and where we get our full beginner's healing skill set that I stick to all the way up to endgame. This is where I see so many people make huge mistakes in not utilizing my absolute favorite skill as a white mage that all beginners and casuals should be using. That skill of course being Medica too. Not only are you putting a regen on the tank but also the entire party which catches all the oopsies that happen in the dungeon. I would say probably about 60% of the time I see healers completely ignore this skill. I will say it louder for the people in the back. If you are a new or casual player, keep Medica 2 on your parties at all times during battle. This will save you 9 out of 10 times and will make your life so much easier and also your party's life so much easier. I do not Medica 2 between pulls. I wait for the tank to pull aggro or wait for a boss battle. Everything above level 50 content will look something like this. Tank pulls first group of enemies, dot each enemy as you're running, regen the tank as you're running, either Medica 2, then Holy Spam, or use Holy once, Medica 2, and then Holy Spam. Sometimes I will only Holy once and then Medica 2, as depending on your spell speed, you might Holy again before the first stun wears off, to which they do not overlap, leaving a little gap. So to remedy this, I Holy, Medica 2, then Holy Holy Holy. 
60 to 80 content at this point is nothing extra as the level 50 focus is pretty much the rest of the content. There are only things that start to change slowly but steadily, which you want to switch from GCDs or global cooldowns that have cast times to OGCDs, which have no cast times. For obvious reason, this is best case scenario because you're spending less time casting your heals and the more time you can DPS or help your party. This does not mean less healing, it just means healing more efficiently. There are a few skills that we're going to highlight that you should potentially work into putting into your rotation. That is level 66 skill Divine Benison should be added regularly. This is a low cooldown and gives the tank a shield. You can just put this on after a regen. Another skill to start thinking of using instead of Cure 2 when you have to heal your tank is level 52 Aflatus Solus. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. This will eventually give us our damage nuke that White Mage gets for their class at level 74. The most beginner thing you can do is not allow three stacks to just sit there. Always keep this where the timer is running at one or two stacks. You obtain a lily every 30 seconds so you can easily use this instead of cure two when you need a single target heal. The reason for keeping this timer running is for every one lily you use, you obtain one third of your blood lily. You have three stacks of lilies and not using them, you're not working towards your blood lily which is a free damage of 900 potency. This is pretty awesome nuke to have in your arsenal. Moving on to level 58 skill Thin Air, pair this with Presence of Mind which can be used to cast quick and free holies. Level 70 skill Plenary Indulgence can be used right before a Medica 2 for a double stack regen effect. Level 76 skill Aflatus Rapture can be used for free group healing. Think of this as a no cast time Medica. It's just a party wide heal. That being said, just to bring it up, I don't think I ever use Medica once I got in Medica 2. There is very few reasons why you would not cast Medica instead of Medica 2, and for most casual content, Medica 2 is enough to heal through AoE, room wide damage, paired with Assize, Asylum, or Aflatus Rapture. Moving on to my last two favorite skills Assize, which is level 56. Keep this on cooldown at all times. There is no reason to hold on to this because it is a huge damage boost as well as free heals. Asylum, I actually just used as a free Medica 2. You can just place this wherever the tank is going to stop pooling or you can place it so the tank pulls all the adds into there and they get healing and everyone gets healing in the party. In a best case scenario, healers know that not everyone gets into the bubble. The methods of content healing that I explained above will literally get you through most dungeons with little to no problems no matter what your gear is. What this will allow you to do is to start analyzing when health is dropping, how fast health will drop in relation to item level gear. Again, this is literally just meat and bones to what you could be doing as a healer. In making this guide from the perspective of helpful and efficient, this will allow you to break into the world of healing far easier than tackling it on your own. I believe that this is a fairly forgiving class to play and allows you to really learn the ebbs and flows of battle. I hope this gives you the basics of healing to give you enough confidence to start your healing class that you've been hesitating to start. Healing is so much more than what I explained here and I really think it is such a fulfilling class. I just want to do a quick shout out to my in-game friend Carbox who ran as a tank so I can get the footage I needed for this video. He has a YouTube which I've linked down below so if you can go over there and show him some love for his videos. I want to thank you all for getting this far and watching this video. If you got any value out of this video at all, then limit break for that subscribe button. And if you want more Final Fantasy tutorials, you can click here.